Well, we would like to, um, to hold our talk in English. And I think will be also the last talk uh, that refers to patent-related issues. Um, in the next less than 10 minutes, we would like to present a proposal of a new legal framework, a remedy that, in our opinion, uh, will make, make making free from patents that patents that often a block maker's perform performance. Uh, perhaps the notion of the maker movement, makers and making, does not need a detailed explanation, but for the sake of clarity, I would like to draw a general picture of our target group. So the maker movement refers to a um, community of technology enthusiasts of diverse cultural <laughs> and social backgrounds. Makers bring high-tech um, expertise from various fields like robotics, electronics, engineering, biotechnology, uh, physics, uh, etc. They are either build new solutions or they customize or improve existing ones to their own needs. They tweak, uh, rebuild, remake and make household devices, instruments, toys, 3D printers, 3D printers drones um, and many other things. In the field, the maker movement can be called a counterculture and is closely related to open source movement. It is a counterculture because it represents a new course of innovations. And as we know nowadays, innovations are the core component of a market success. And the best expression of innovativeness of a company are of course patents. And patents are nowadays uh, recognized as important business assets. Companies seek to protect their uh, technologies or purchase patented technologies in order to enlarge the IP portfolios in order to defend themselves from competitors. Uh, basically speaking, the field has changed into a litigation-driven industry. Um, to build a strong and big IP portfolio, one needs technologies <coughs> that are patentable and, of course, to get them patented. And the latter follows a paradigm, the more the better, quantity over quality. This uh, results in something I call over patentization, which is utterly important for makers, because more and more technology fields are patented and recognized as patentable. Mm, even new fields, so-called disruptive fields, get quickly saturated with patents, um, and it becomes extremely troublesome and challenging for an indi individual like a maker to, to figure out whether she or he makes own a patented device and which elements, components of a device are patented. A good illustration of this situation is, my, uh, is in my opinion, a smartphone that covers, uh, as estimated by Samsung lawyers, 250,000 patents. Of course, you can ask whether all patented solutions deserve a worth patent exclusivity and patent protection, and certainly not all. Actually, even uh, Google admits that its huge IP portfolio is not free from doubts. So at the moment, uh, patent quality is um, the core topic on the agenda of patent reform, because in many ways, poor quality patents are responsible for many drawbacks, shortcomings, and abuses of the patent system. But patent exclusivity is not all powerful, it's limited. The majority of patent orders recognize certain uses as legal even without the authorization of a patent holder. For example, private and non-commercial use, experimental use, or repair doctrine. In my PhD, I focus on such instruments and I wanted to measure, analyze how much freedom to operate they can guarantee and more precisely, how much or to what extent they can, they can be supportive for makers. In a nutshell, I reached two conclusions. First of all, patent exceptions are neglected. They do not attract mu much attention in legal or economic discourse and are very often concluded with a very conventional statement for the balance of interest. Secondly, they have very narrow application scopes that cannot cope with the broad spectrum of makers' activities because making as such is 
and uncontrollable innovating process uh, that takes place within open uh, big communities where information freely flow from one maker to another, from one community to another, and sharing information, um, more precisely sharing instructions on how to improve a device, um, how to build a certain um, um, device, is in context of patents and patent exceptions very troublesome because it may lead to the accusation of indirect infringement or inducement to infringe. But here where the proposal comes, the, the green light that addresses the, the shortcomings of patent exclusivity for makers. So the green light uh, is designed to support and secure makers from patent troubles, mainly of course patent infringement. It is designed to keep patents open for public and non-commercial uses and covers a set all possible making activities like testing, mixing components, prototyping, and of course sharing information and sharing instructions. It is designed as a blanket solution and does not require any patent, uh, uh, any permission from a patent holder. And it's called a green, green light because it's a green light from a patent holder to go, to make. It's a tolerance of a making behavior. Thank you. Uh, so our proposition consists of two parts. Green light itself as a patent exception and green base. Uh, green base would be a database for makers in which uh, they, ca they could submit uh, their modification, their ideas, something between GitHub for all, the, all of us who know a little bit about programming and uh, open access journal. And uh, they could be assured that uh, every uh, improvement upon a patented design that would be submitted to Greenbase would be protected uh, uh, with green light, so that uh, there would be uh, no mistake and they could feel free making. Uh, of course, uh, very few, uh, very few makers uh, know <coughs> anything about uh, patented designs and uh, have enough skill to or even describe their uh, improvements uh, in proper language. Uh, so uh, the database uh, should be uh, reviewed by a, a team. We hope to build uh, uh, some kind of Wikipedia-like community of uh, uh, legal experts and tech enthusiasts who would uh, help makers uh, just complete their descriptions. Uh, and if uh, and we succeed in that, uh, the format of the database <coughs> would be useful for patent offices as a prior art database uh, so that uh, it could be used as an extension of uh, already, uh, already possessed in databases in patent registration process. So that uh, uh, the uses which are obvious for people skilled in the art uh, would be not be deemed novel enough to register another low quality patent for something that maker had improved. If our proposition is uh, implemented as we suggest, it would bring benefits for everybody, for makers themselves, uh, because they would have no constraints of information sharing and uh, they wouldn't uh, have to be afraid of patent litigation. Uh, for the patent owners, because basically, since they have the full commercial right to use their patents, they would also have full commercial uh, right to use all the modifications. Uh, and for the patent offices, which would have another source of uh, prior art. Uh, this is just a doubt, so we have a lot of open questions. Uh, we don't uh, have any set in stone uh, uh, idea who and how should review the green base entries. We have to set, uh, uh, we have to decide what entry form would be the most useful for the patent offices. And uh, also we have to think uh, really hard <laughs> about how to avoid corporate warfare uh, on the base of uh, green base. Because as this would be very young and very exploitable legal system, of course there would be a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, 
uh, abuses uh, from various companies and uh, new kinds of patent trolls. Uh, we would like to start the discussion on the topic, so feel free to email us at uh, contact at uh, uh, greenlightfoodmakers.org and thank you.